Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 4 in our Figma tutorial series. My name is Carl from UX Toast and today we are talking about Figma tips and tricks which are really going to help you speed up your workflow. I use these tricks every single day uh, and it will save you a second here and there but when you add up these seconds over the course of projects it is really going to save you buckets of time. So we're going to jump straight into one of my favourites actually uh, which has really helped me in the past. So uh, this is a screen that we designed during our uh, prototyping series uh, episode, which was the, the last episode before this one. Um, and it's just a, a simple bit of UI, but let's imagine you were designing on this screen and you, know, uh, you needed a bit more room at the bottom of your page. So you go, to, you go to stretch your frame and you do this and things just move out of place. It's really just not how you want it. If you're going the other way, you know, things are just misaligning. And the reason this happens, if I just take this back, the reason this happens is because of the constraints. Um, but sometimes, you know, you just want to be quick, you just want to add, um, you just want to add a bit more room on your screen without having to go in and fix all your constraints. So this is where using command to stretch um, is really useful. So I'm going to press the command key here. And if you remember before, things were moving all out of place, um, but now everything is nice and neat. If I let go of command, you see how things, um, they respect their constraints again. But if you hold command, it ignores constraints and it will just expand from wherever you're expanding from um, and this has saved me so many times. Um, generally you should be making sure your constraints are all nice and correct and how you ever you'd want them. So if I had things like that I'd make sure they're at the top left so they would stay at the top left. But when there are things that just aren't working your way um, and you don't have time necessarily to think about all the constraints just hold command and you can stretch out your frame. Um, yeah great tip that is one that has saved me many times. The next one we're going to talk about is um, we're going to use command again um, and this is using command button to select an element in your frame. So this is um, a design that we have, this is the uh, UX Toast app um, and let's imagine I wanted to edit this copy where it says one of five. So I could clip in, uh, so I'm double pressing in and each time I press in it goes into a group um, and you know maybe I've got quite a lot of groups, it's taking a long time to get to it but all I want to do is just get to this one of five. The way you can do that is if you hold command when you're hovering on a screen, so I'm holding command now, you can see now that each element on this page I can select. So command just goes deep into the layers and you can select whichever layer you want. So before I'd have to double click and I'd just keep double clicking, but now I can hold command, I can go straight into this bit of text and you know I can move it if I need to, I can update it if I need to. Um, so they're yeah, very useful, especially when you've got really high fidelity designs and you've got a lot of layers going on, a lot of groups going on, just press and command and you can go straight into that layer um, to help you find exactly what you need to. Next one we're going to talk about is uh, tidying up and uh, swapping elements of the screen. So I've got um, an artboard here, it's got a load of dots on it um, and let's say I was really quickly making this but I wanted everything to be uh, really nice and neat. If I just highlight everything on this page so I've got everything selected and up here at the top right you'll see an option called tidy up and what tidy up is going to do is it's going to bring everything nice and aligned and now that everything is tidied up that means I can have consistent um, vertical and horizontal spacing so you can see the options here I've got 32 um, spacing sideways and 51 spacing up and down if I want to change that to 48 for example you can see how things move um, and I can go shorter than that if I really wanted to I can then also just drag things out from here if I really wanted to and it will make sure everything's nice and consistent. And I can also swap elements um, whilst I'm done doing this as well. So uh, if I really want to, I can just highlight these and you can see these pink dots. I can move them, some things around, um, I can move things up and down. Um, so really useful, especially when you've got a lot of things on your page and you just want to really neatly make sure everything's aligned and uh, quickly swap elements. The next thing we're going to talk about is um, uh, creating arcs in, with circles, which is a, a really cool feature that Figma have, um, and also um, dragging shapes, making sure that you have constraints on your shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm pressing O here, and that brings up my oval tool, my oval tool, um, and I can drag, and you can see how I've got. I can you know make it really thin, I can make it really long. If I hold Shift while I'm doing this, that makes sure it's going to be a perfect circle, um, and I want you to just look up, if I should bring that up again quickly. I want you to pay attention over here, this is the constraints uh, button while I'm doing this, so I'm gonna press it over again. And when I press shift, you can see how that constraints 
button comes on. So that is making sure the constraints are on. That means then if I ever wanted to make things smaller, I can disconnect these portions. If I do that like 400, for example, that makes it sure it goes uh, consistent. It is, uh, the poor portions are still fixed, but I'd have to turn that off if I wanted to fix that. So you can see now, um, yeah, I can do that. It's 200 up here. Ooh, sorry. It's 200 up here, and that makes it thinner. So I'm going to make another circle again. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to make a perfectly uh, proportioned circle. And then you can see here I've got an arc appearing. So I can bring my arc in like this. Um, and these are really good for, you know, if you're doing data visualization, if you're doing pie charts, or if you're doing like, if you're trying to mock up loading states and maybe you have like a little loading wheel. Because um, what else I can do from here is I can take this ratio and I can bring it all the way in if I want to. So I could take this and turn it into my primary blue, for example. What I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this. Um, and bring my sweep all the way back around there. I just make this the background one quickly and change that to my gray. So you can start to have something like this. You can imagine how this might um, might mock up maybe a loading state. Um, I can also round these corners if I want to. Um, so yeah, very cool um, and really useful, as I say, for like pie charts, data visualization. It can really make a, a mock up just go that extra that extra mile and make it seem really polished. The next thing I want to talk about is duplicating. I do this in all the um, episodes so far um, and sometimes I'll talk about it and sometimes I won't. Um, but duplicating is uh, so it makes things so much easier instead of having to do control C and control V, which is fine if that's what you want to do. Here I can just do command D and there we go. That has just duplicated what I'm holding. I'm holding this card here. Um, and now, if I'm just trying to get this nice and um, evened up, this is this is another uh, trick that I talk about. If I press Option, you can see the spacing. So this means that I can see exactly where everything is. I can see that this is 16 pixels from there, 24 pixels from there. If I want it to be 16 pixels, you know, I can just drag that along a little bit, and there we go. Um, and if that's where I want it to be, that's fine. If I want it to be over, if I want it to be over here, then that's also fine. I can see that spacing. So duplicating by doing Command D and holding Option and to be able to see the spacings from a selected element. The next uh, trick that I'm going to talk to you is about copying and pasting styles and this is one of the biggest time savers in my opinion. So um, let's say I wanted to create this card over here, so, um, but I didn't want to duplicate it for whatever reason, so I'm just going to create a rectangle and I'll just make sure that aligns at the bottom there and the top there. So you know 24 pixels, that's fine. How wide is this? I'm pressing command to go deep into my card base layer there. 192 width, so I'm just gonna take that 192. Cool. Um, and here you can see this this card back this card base has it's got rounded corners, there's a shadow, it's white, and currently my card base is grey. If I just do command, so I'm pressing into that card base again, I'm gonna press command option C, and then I'm gonna go over to this layer, and I'm gonna press command option V. And what that does is that copy and paste styles. So in this scenario, it is copy and paste the border radius, the drop shadow, and the color. So it's taken all of those things along. Um, but for now, let's say I just have a duplicate here. What you can also do in terms of duplicating styles is you can duplicate for, um, Sorry, in terms of um, copying styles, you can also copy fill styles. So over here, I've got a image, and this is the image I want to be in there. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do Command Option C on this image. I'm gonna go into this, I'm going to there really easily again, just by pressing Command, which takes me into that layer. Command Option V there, and it's copied the style of that image over onto that image. So big time saver there. Um, I've got a little um, shape over here just to show how much more this really can do. So I've got a, a square with some rounded corners and it's got a gradient fill and it's also got a gradient stroke, which I have um, nice, nice and thick there. If I just go up here, this is something I show because a lot of people um, aren't aware of this. You have shapes up here um, and you have things, you can have triangles. I always use, um, I use ellipse, so circles by pressing O. I use rectangles by pressing R a lot, but for now I'm just gonna use a star. I'm gonna hold shift as I'm dragging that out because again, as we say, that makes sure that it has its, um, its uh, constraints and it will be proportionate. Again, what I can do, command option C and over here, command option V, and that is gonna duplicate all those styles onto there. 
So here, as I said, I've got border radius and I've got fill and I've got stroke and it has copied all of those things. It's got my border radius, it has my fill and it's got my stroke. So this is a massive time saver um, and this has saved me so much time over the years. This next tip is one that I find really, really useful for um, just day to day when I'm talking to engineers specifically. If I need to show them a design that I've got on Figma, I can, as I said, we've talked before, I can hold this and I can share, but sometimes I just want to copy an image quickly. Um, and right now, like the way that you probably end up doing it is you go to export and then you choose how, um, like your, all your options down here and then you export it. Maybe you then have to find it on your desktop and do it um, and then send it that way. But if you go over here and, and you have your layer selected or your frame selected, sorry, and you do command shift C, that has taken what you've selected and turned it into an image. Now if I do command V, that is pasted that image. This is, a, uh, this is an image file which I can put into an email, I can I put that into Slack, um, and it just saves me so much time when I'm just trying to share an image really quickly with someone just to get their ideas or just get their thoughts. Um, and you can do that with more than just a frame. So if I just want to take this card, again, Command Option C and Command V, and there we go. There's my card component. Um, in this scenario, it is bigger. I guess you get, if you have your export sizes, two times maybe. Um, but you can you know, make it smaller if you need to. Um, so that has been a huge time saver and is so, so important for me um, when I'm trying to uh, communicate designs with other people. The next trick I wanna talk about is about how you can use math in your design. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna quickly draw um, a square. I press R there just to get the rectangle tool and I'm gonna make this 16 pixels from the edge. Um, one pixel less. In fact, that'll do, that'll do for now. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna you know, give this a nice fill and a nice gradient just because it's nice when things, uh, when things look nice, a little border radius. Um, so let's say I'm designing uh, a banner. This is a banner for uh, my mobile design for whatever reason. And I want two boxes here. I want a box there and I want a box here. I want them to be evenly sized um, and I want them to have 16 pixels between them. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this quickly and I'm just gonna fill this in as uh, blue just so we can understand what's going on. So from here in my width I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna do slash two so divide by two. So that will take it down to half the size. If I now duplicate this you can you'll see how if I put this up against each other these are now half the size of that. Two of these makes up the width of that. Um, but now let's say I want a 16 pixel um, margin between them. What I can do is so I've got them both selected here and I can go up here and I can do minus eight. So I want eight pixels from both. If I then right align that, and you can see I've got 16 pixels here. So you can use math in so many ways. You can uh, divide, you can multiply, you can add, you can subtract. Um, these are, this is the way I uh, most often use math, um, but there are so many ways that this can really help speed up your workflow. This next tip is one that I use a lot and I won't explain that often, um, as it's just become really uh, subconsciously uh, ingrained in my mind. But this is, uh, this is so, so helpful, especially when it comes to things like spacing. Um, if you design with like an eight point spacing system, uh, this is really, really useful. So I'm just gonna quickly, uh, again, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just take these quickly and bring them over here. So, um, as I said here, I've got like a 16 pixel gap and here, let's say I've got a 24 pixel gap. Um, let's say I actually didn't want these to have a 24 pixel gap, I wanted them to have a 32 pixel gap. What you can do is if I highlight these two, um, if you hold shift and then use the arrow keys, that's called a nudge. So a nudge is a large space. If I'm not holding shift and I'm just going up and down, I'm just gonna hold option here so you can see. I'm just going to press up and down on my arrow keys. You can see that's saying up and it's going up and down by one. But if I hold option here, so you can see, and then hold shift, you can see it's now going up and down by eight. So 32, 24. The way that you, um, I think Figma set uh, your nudge amount automatically at 10 pixels potentially. So what you may have to do is go over here into your preferences and change your nudge amount. So I've got my big nudge set at uh, an eight pixels. So yeah, this is a, a, a really great way to get your spacings, um, things such as these details, such as spacings, which are really important to get right. Um, it just helps you speed up. You no, you no longer have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you just shift and nudge and things just become so much easier and so much quicker.
This next tip is really useful for um, if you're trying to potentially change uh, colors on an entire design. Maybe you've had like a rebrand or something like that. Maybe there's been an update in the design system. I'm not sure. Um, but this is really useful um, for mass changes. So I've got my uh, frame selected here. And over on this right side, you can hear, you can see I've got selection colors. And that is showing me all the colors within this frame. Um, for example, let's say our, um, our black color has changed and we need to update this. I could um, obviously go into my design system uh, and change it there, but for, for whatever reason, if you needed to change it here, you could go into this option and change it and it will update across everything. That is matching that color. So if I just go back into here, uh, you can see now gold gradient is uh, selected and all my text, which was the black color, um, has now been updated. You can obviously also disconnect from there um, and go into here if you wanted to um, just have a new color, for example, and just have something custom. That's also fine. Um, so a really quick way of mass updating colors. Uh, and you can do this on so much more. I can do Command A and select everything. I've got all my selection colors here. If I wanted to change my, my primary blue here, for example, to gold gradient, you can see that updating across everywhere where that style is uh, already matched. I'm gonna undo that for now. And the last tip I wanna to talk to you about is super powerful and I guarantee this will save you so much time at some point in your career. And that is by copying as SVG. So without a doubt, if you're working with engineers at some point, you'll be delivering an asset to an engineer and they will ask you, can I have that as an SVG? Uh, and this is how you go about that. So here we've got the UX Total logo just in the middle of a frame. Uh, this is a, uh, an illustration that I've created before. And you could, as we've talked about before, you could do Command Shift C um, and Command Shift C, that's outputting it as a, a PNG file there. Obviously I can export down here and you can export as an SVG down here. Uh, but one way I find is really useful is if you go up here and edit and copy as copy as SVG, you can then just give that code straight to your engineer if they want it. I'll just show you how this looks. So I'm putting a text file there and there we go. There's our SVG, which this is the SVG that makes up our uh, UX Toast logo there. So when this is then put into a HTML file, this will show the UX Toast logo, which is, will be really lightweight um, and uh, a really, really scalable version of this logo. So a very good practice to get into, even if engineers aren't specifically asking for this. So there we go. They are my tips and tricks for how to speed up your Figma workflow. I really hope this has been useful to you. If it has, please consider subscribing because it really helps the channel. Um, and if there are any Figma tips and tricks that you use daily and you think it could help benefit others, please leave a comment and just let me know what those are because I'm sure someone will see it and it's bound to save someone so much time in the long run. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.